Hello. How is everyone doing? Today I will give a lecture on cytology of pleural, pericardial, and peritoneal fluid. Before we begin the lecture, I would strongly recommend everyone to pause the video in case you need a time to read the slide. Let's begin. For effusion, it can be classified as transudate or exudate. I'm sure you all still remember the difference between those two, as you learned from year two and year three. Here, I will briefly explain the difference. Transudate is the results from imbalance of hydrostatic and oncotic pressures. It has low LDH and low total protein, while exudate is the results from injury to the mesothelium. It has high LDH and high total protein. The distinction between transudate and exudate is very important because cytologic examination is not needed for a transudate. Excessive pleural fluid can occur in benign and malignant conditions. Example sources in benign condition are from pulmonary infection and abdominal diseases. Meanwhile, example sources in malignant condition, such as from lung cancer, breast cancer, and lymphoma cancer. Next, pericardial fluid. So, sources of benign conditions can come from infection, radiation, and hypothyroidism. Meanwhile, sources of malignant conditions in the excessive of pericardial fluid are commonly associated with lung, breast, lymphoma, and sarcoma cancers. For peritoneal fluid, sources of benign conditions including portal venous hypertension, hypoproteinemia, and salt retention. Meanwhile, sources of malignant conditions are commonly associated with ovary, breast, lymphoma cancers, and etc. Okay, you have got the idea on the fluid sources of each condition. Now, let's learn how to collect the specimen. The lining of pleural, pericardial, and peritoneal cavities, which contain the fluid, is a single layer of mesothelial cells. To collect the fluid in each of the cavity, the specialized doctor will insert a needle into the space. The procedures are called thoracentesis for pleural, pericardiocentesis for pericardial, and paracentesis for peritoneal. After that, cytologist will collect the fluid in clean containers without fixation and bring to the laboratory. The fluid can also be collected in heparinized bottle to prevent clotting. The cytologist can process the sample directly. If not, the fluid can be refrigerated at 4 degrees while waiting for it to be processed. But, before the fluid can be processed, the cytologist needs to do gross evaluation and fluid analysis. For gross evaluation, the fluid color and viscosity will be recorded in a form. For fluid analysis, the fluid will be divided for biochemistry, cytology, and microbiology analysis. After that, the fluid will be ready for cytology slide preparation. First, you need to shake the containers to disperse the cells. Then, centrifuge the fluid about 50 milliliters in volume and discard the supernatant. Collect the sediment for various procedures, such as direct smears, cytospin, thin layer slide preparation, and filtration, which will transfer the cells to the slide. Then, fix the slide with alcohol and ready for pap stain or MGG stain. However, apart from the above procedures, you may also pull the cells from the sediment and prepare cell blocks using paraffin wax. After that, you can view the cells and detect specific markers by immunohistochemistry staining. Here is the flow image of the filtration procedure. It is actually an ancient procedure to collect the cells from the fluid before we have various models of centrifuge machine in our current world. Okay, after slide preparation, you will view the slide. And how to do the reporting. If the slide is negative for malignancy, you need to report it as no malignant cells identified. If the slide is positive for malignancy, you need to report it as positive for malignant cells. However, if you find suspicious cells in the slide, you can report it abnormal cells are poorly preserved or too few cells to support diagnosis. The report will be sent to the pathologist for validation. Do you know that? 
for detection of serosal malignancy, or mesothelial cells malignancy, cytology is more sensitive, than tissue biopsy. Okay, now let's learn on what you can find out, from the slide. First, for benign effusions, they usually contain mesothelial cells, histiocytes, or macrophages, and lymphocytes. Red, and white blood cells, are common contaminants in the slide, as bleeding is quite common, during the needle procedures. For the mesothelial cells in the slide, they can be sparse, or numerous in benign effusions. Let's look at the cytomorphology of mesothelial cells. In normal conditions, the cells are uniform, have oval to round nuclei, with round cells, and have peripheral vacuolation, and blebs on the surface, which are microvilli. Also, the cells are usually dispersed as isolated cells, or occasionally in small clusters. The cells can also have binucleus and multinucleus. Sometimes, clear outer rim, or known as lacy skirt, or halo, in the cytoplasm can be seen. Here, in figure A, the left image, you can see the appearance of clear outer rim, or lacy skirt, in the mesothelial cell, as pointed by the arrow. The arrowheads, in the same image, are showing the peripheral vacuolation. Next, the appearance of reactive mesothelial cells. The cells usually, varying in cell size, and nuclear size. They have large central, of paracentral nuclei. The reactive cells can also have, binucleus or multinucleus, and have prominent nucleoli. Here, are the images of reactive mesothelial cells. You can see, the nuclear size, is varying between cells. Binucleus, and prominent nucleoli, are also shown in the bottom image. Okay, now let's look at the mesothelial cells, in malignant effusions. The malignant mesothelial cells, can either come from the primary organ of the cancer, or from secondary organ, due to metastasis, that spread to the serosal cavities. Usually, the malignant pleural effusion, occurred due to lung cancer, in both men and women. For malignant peritoneal effusion, it can be due to, intestinal and pancreatic cancers, in men. And ovarian cancer, in women. For malignant pericardial effusion, it can be due to lung cancer, breast cancer, melanoma, and lymphoma. Here, in this table, is the list of the most common tumors, that cause malignant pleural, and peritoneal effusions, in men and women. Okay, you know already about the causes of malignant mesothelioma. Now, let's look at their cytomorphology. They usually have one cell population, large clusters, of malignant mesothelial cells. The clusters have irregular, knobby surface, and flower-like borders. The cytoplasm is dense, with lacy appearance. The nucleus of malignant mesothelial cells, are enlarged centrally, with macronucleoli, and irregular borders. Here, is the image of malignant pleural effusion. Single cell population, flower-like borders, large nucleus, and macronucleoli, are some of the features that can be seen in the image. In this next image, large cluster of tumor cells, were displayed in the malignant pleural effusion. And here, some more images of malignant mesothelioma. You may pause the video, to read the description of each image. In certain malignant mesothelioma cases, striking cytoplasm vacuolation can be seen, as shown in these images. However, these cases are rarely happen. Here, are some more tips, on how you can detect malignant cells in the effusions. You may pause the video, and take your time to read. Next, I want to talk about cytomorphology of metastatic tumors. For your info, metastatic tumor, is tumor that has spread from the primary site of origin, or where it started, into different areas of the body. First, adenocarcinoma of the lung. The cells can be in large spheres, or appear as single cell. They have increased nucleus, to cytoplasm ratios. Again, cytoplasmic vacuolation can appear. The nucleoli is large and irregular. You can see the right image, is the malignant cells of lung adenocarcinoma, in the pleural fluid. If for example, 
the cytologist has a problem to identify the malignant cells, special stains or immunohistostain can be performed. The above image is the cells of breast ductal carcinoma, in pleural fluid. The bottom image is the cells of stomach adenocarcinoma, in pleural fluid. The appearance of signet ring cells are unique characteristics in breast and stomach cancers. Next, squamous cell carcinoma. The metastatic cells can appear in large clusters or isolated cells. They have hyperchromatic nuclei, dense cytoplasm, and occasionally orangephilic. Here, in the bottom image, orangephilic and large clusters of cells can be seen in the metastatic cervical squamous cell carcinoma that appear in pericardical fluid. In this image, metastatic squamous cell carcinoma in pleural fluid is confirmed by the orangephilic and hyperchromatic nuclei. Next metastatic tumor is small cell carcinoma. They appeared small. They can be isolated, in chains, and in clusters. Nuclear molding is another unique characteristic of small cell carcinoma, and with scant cytoplasm. Here, the right image is the metastatic lung small carcinoma, in pleural fluid. Small size of cells, some isolated, and some in cluster, with nuclear molding, were shown in the image. Another metastatic tumor is melanoma. They are usually single, large cells, and have large eccentric nuclei. The cells have binucleus and prominent nucleoli. In some cases, they have fine brown pigments in cytoplasm or intranuclear pseudo inclusions. Cytologists may perform immunocytochemistry staining for precise cells detection. They can use S100 and HMB45 antibodies for detection markers. In this table, is simplified markers of immunohisto or immunocytostaining that cytologists can use to detect specific cells, either mesothelioma or metastatic tumors, in case differential diagnosis occurred. And here are some more suggested markers to detect cells from mesothelioma, gastric adenocarcinoma, lung adenocarcinoma, and squamous cell carcinoma. And here, Suggested markers for breast adenocarcinoma, melanoma, and small cell carcinoma. The suggested marker will specifically stain to the specific protein in the slide, allowing precise detection and diagnosis to be made. Now, you can test your knowledge. Let's say you are working as a cytologist in a cytology laboratory. How are you going to report this first case? Next case, patient of 63 years old. Ex-smoker. Dyspnea for the past six months. A chest x-ray shows left pleural effusion. What is your diagnosis, and how to report? Okay, that's all for the cytology of pleural, pericardial, and peritoneal fluid. If you have any further questions, you can write the question in a chat box, under this topic, in UKN Folio. Thank you, and take care everyone.